set it to start recording automatically, and it did on the last one I did, but I just noticed that it wasn't recording then, so um, awesome. It is now. Thank you. So, can you see my screen? Yes, it's blank. Blank. <laughs> awesome. I'm sure we put something on it. Um, text. So, as for um, the e-commerce side of Infinity Eye, or what we do, um, th it's really broken into five different uh, steps. So, you know, from a basic point of view, you need to understand these different types of um, e-commerce sales that we do, what we participate in with Infinity Eye. So, first thing we have is retail arbitrage, which is still a form of drop shipping. But basically what we're doing is we are buying and selling from retail sites. So from one retail site to another. So like um, eBay is a retail site and Amazon is a retail site. They've got end users going uh, directly to their site to make purchases. Now because there's so many of these different retail sites and there's so many different products on all of them, um, there becomes a variance in pricing um, due to a number of different reasons. But we can exploit that variance um, that by um, buying and selling from one side and selling on another. I mean, that works very well. And you can do it all day long. You only need to make you know, a few dollars off each sale. Um, and you just do 10, 20, 100, 500 sales a day, and it can add up to some significant income. And, I mean, in particular, this particular version of retail arbitrage, we get many people saying that, you know, it doesn't work, there's no products, we can't find a big enough profit. Um, but one of the guys that was also at the Orlando event with us, a good friend of ours, Matt McCormick, he's done over a million dollars in sales this year alone um, just using this method here, from one retail site to another retail site. So, uh, you know, it works. It works. The second one we've got here is, so wholesale arbitrage. It's not really arbitrage. But, I mean, drop shipping again, but this time you are purchasing from a wholesaler that, so basically a wholesaler is somebody that doesn't direct, doesn't deal directly with the end user, the end customers. So this is where you can go in and purchase at bulk, or you can purchase um, individually in some of them, and then sell them on your own retail sites, be it your own eBay account or your own Amazon, um, Infinii store, Shopify, um, whatever it is, your own WooCommerce site perhaps. So in this scenario, generally the, you can get more profit margin, per sale, um, but it's hard to find good wholesalers that you can deal with. Um, one, obviously, that we're most excited about is the marketplace. So this is what, effectively, that is going to do for us. Um, and that's uh, what I was on the call with this morning, talking with Kevin and John about. Um, so that's going to be awesome. Um, the third version we've got is like shopping for profits. So this is another version that we teach within Infinii, um, and that is basically, it's more targeted towards US people. But, I mean, the same concept works wherever you are in the world. And what you're doing is you are going into physical stores, be it your local Walmart, Kmart, um, whatever, stores that you've got, and purchasing products from them, physically going in, paying the money and taking home the products with you, um, you're getting their end-of-line discounts or their end-of-season sales or whatever it is, anything they've got on special that is a good price, and then you are selling these items um, on your own retail sites, be it Amazon, eBay, whatever. And you can either do this, um, take the products and sell them at, like take them home and sell them individually, or you can sell them, send them in bulk to places like Amazon and use their FBA fulfilled by Amazon to sell them and they will basically deal with the end user and ship them out as the sales come in. So, you're shopping for profits, um, like particularly in the US, I mean, you've got apps like an Amazon app that you can scan items, go in, scan the barcode, and it will tell you how much the item's selling for, well, if, if it's selling on Amazon, which most items are, and it will tell you how much they're selling for, it will tell you what your fees are, and if you buy it at this price, it's going to tell you what your profit would be. So it's very simple, and I mean, when we were in Orlando, that's one of the things that we did at the event. Um, we all jumped on some buses and went to these five below um, Walmart and a bunch of other stores and went and scanned items and purchased them up, purchased them, 
um, took them back, wrapped them up, uh, labelled them, and then sent them into Amazon for FBA. So um, there's a lot of people doing very well in this. Uh, Nikki and uh, Parrish Witherspoon, um, the two that come to my mind most that do this uh, very effectively. They've made a ton of money from it. Obviously, they're in the US. Um, but yeah, I mean it works pretty well, and it's you know while you're out there shopping and doing your groceries or whatever, you can you know you get an eye for things that are coming along, and you just throw them in your soup and your trolley at the same time, and then ship them off and sell them. You know it works well. So I mean that, although you've got the Amazon app in the US for people in Australia and that or wherever else in the world, you still you know the same concept works. You can go and purchase them on discount and then sell them online later. So FBA is uh, fulfilled by Amazon and that's basically what we're talking about there. You are you purchase your products in bulk from wherever, be it another wholesaler site online or whatever, and then you label them, send them into Amazon, uh, create a listing or add it to another listing that's already there, and then once you set your pricing in that, you leave it alone and Amazon does the rest for you. As a customer comes to Amazon, searches for your product, finds it, clicks buy, um, the Amazon will send the product out to the customer and basically deal with the customer in its entirety. And then Amazon pays you every two weeks so um, into your local bank account. So you don't get the money straight away from your sales, but you get paid every two weeks with Amazon. And I mean, that works very well, and it's very hands-off once you've um, got your products in there. So it's a good way to sort of scale up your business, you know. FBI, I don't know what if, oh, that should be FBM. So it's fulfilled by Merchant, which is similar to this, except for uh, you are sending the product out yourself, doing that side of it. So I hope that's clear. Um, that's the basic five um, versions of what we do in the way of the e-commerce sales. Um, all of them work. Um, we have some people that just do one particular type. We have others that do all of them or a mixture in between. I mean, it's just, um, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat if you're into skilling cats. So, if you've got any questions about that, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to pass the screen over to Virginia and she's going to run through um, some more in-depth training on what she's been doing and how um, she's been able to create success with this e-commerce business. So, okay. are you there, Virginia? Yep, I'm here. Um... How do I share my screen? And I think change. I have to make me a presenter. Yep, doing it now. Okay. <clears throat> Should be all yours, yeah? Okay, so show my screen. Okay, I see. Perfect. All right. Excellent. All right. Can everybody see my screen? And can, I guess they can hear me. Um, George, you need to let me know in the chat if they can see my screen. I can see your screen and I can see your, and I can hear you. <laughs> okay, and perfect. So Jason, James, and Jim. Got three okay. Days on there. Perfect. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you very much, George, for, for having me here today and come share a little bit of my experience with all the ninja warriors that we have in our team. Um, again, my name is Virginia Frankie and I am an Infinii partner. I also lead the Spanish-speaking team of, uh, of Team Ninjas. And um, as also George and Marin also uh, was I am a um, DS domination uh, founding member. And in the photo that so that's me in the center with uh, Brian Barsix Infinii COO to my right, and Bill Papachar Lampus. He's one of Infinii's e-commerce trainers. Uh, to my left, uh, that photo we took in Spain when uh, I had the pleasure of uh, presenting to uh, the uh, in, in the Infinity uh, event live event in Barcelona. Now, as uh, George mentioned, I have been in e-commerce for about two years, and um, when I started, I didn't want to recruit. I basically wanted to 
learn the business before I actually pitched it to anybody. And I could not even believe how simple it was that I, when I spoke with Marin, I almost did not do the business because I could not believe that you could actually make money without having to pre-buy your inventory and without having to recruit. Because the majority of the business that I had done in the past, you had to recruit people in order to make the uh, big money. So imagine if I just would have said, no, I'm not doing it. I don't even want to think about it. Anyway, I started from the bottom. I went through all the training. I asked a lot of questions. I made many mistakes. Some of them cost me some money, so I very quickly learned because I don't like to lose money. And I don't think any of us really do. I mean, I did not know everything, not, and not everything was perfect in my life. And I still don't know a lot of the things I need to do, but I never let that stop me from moving forward. I don't wait for things to be perfect. I just move along and, and try to do the best I can and try to learn as much as I can. You know, in my country, I am originally from Puerto Rico. In my country, we have a saying, and I will do my best to translate it for all of you, and it goes something like this. If you won't let me in through the door, I will come inside through the window, but I'm coming in. So basically, that means to me that when you knock on a door and nobody answers, you have to figure out a way to get to the stuff that you need. Sometimes things will not be as easy or as perfect as you would like them to be, but you have got to keep trying until you get it done. Don't give up. This business is the same way. It will not happen overnight. I cannot stress that enough. A lot of people want to, things to happen tomorrow, and it's not. You have to work at it, be constant and focus. And, you know, when you see people that sort of just started and all of a sudden they're, they're, they're having much more success than you are, don't compare yourself to them. Just be happy that they're having success and try to find out what, make them successful because you have to understand that we all have different experiences and that person might have some skills that they brought to the table when they started the business that you actually have to learn which means that it's going to take you a little while longer and um, to understand and to learn those skills to get you to where that person currently is. So to start the first thing that I did when I started my e-commerce business was basically to treat it as a business. Don't treat this as a hobby whenever you have time, whenever, because that's exactly how you will learn, or how you will earn, I'm sorry. Treat this as the business that it is. So the first thing that I did was basically I changed the username on the uh, eBay account that I had. I changed it to something that sounded more professional, that sounded like a company. Coming from the high-tech industry, uh, I understood very well that most people feel more comfortable when buying online, when they're dealing with a company than with a, an individual. And um, another thing that I do when I communicate with my buyers is I always thank them for contacting me, okay? Instead of, you know, even if they're calling, if, even, even if they're emailing me to tell me that they hate the product, that they want to send it back, I always open that conversation with thank you for contacting me, you know, and instead of using words like I and my or me, I use words like we and ours and us. For example, if I were to, I, I basically would say something like this, um, I would write, thank you for contacting, uh, let's see the name of your business, thank you for contacting uh, Blue Flamingo Sales. You know, our listing for the bread maker is one of our most popular items, and it is only available in red. That is just an example of how I would communicate with a customer when they are contacting me. And I said, uh, 
you know, have a fantastic day and, you know, sincerely Blue Flamingo Sales or whatever the name of the store, of, of your username that you have picked for your store. Uh, also bear in mind that when you change your username on eBay and you don't like it, you can change it, but you have to wait 30 days. So pick a good one. Don't obsess over it, but pick a good one. Pick something that has, you know, the word sales in it or the word, the word deals in it and, um, and start there. Uh, I also change and I switch from an individual eBay account to a business account because I wanted to make sure that eBay understood that I was serious about my business. Okay, you know, this also later on will help you when you go and request your limits to be increased. You know, we are out there, we're giving the impression that we're this company, but they don't know we are basically sitting in our living room in our pajamas, okay? So we want to give that impression so that people feel more comfortable and also so that eBay understands that we are serious sellers and, and, and help us a little bit more than perhaps somebody that is uh, an individual that doesn't sell a lot. Okay, we all have to start somewhere. Okay, then obviously, as we all know, every company has a logo. What I did, I created a quick logo in PowerPoint and then later on after I, uh, I started making some sales and started making some money, I took some of that money that I earned and hired somebody on Fiverr to create a proper logo for me. All these things that I did kind of helped me get into the right frame of mind to sort of get me to to basically say, okay, this is a real serious business, even though, like I said, I was sitting in, in my dining room table in my pajamas. Now, I have a secret. I have a secret that I'm going to tell you guys. It's not, it's not what you think. It's not what you think, but my secret is this. I hate shopping. My husband has to basically drag me out of the house kicking and screaming because I hate doing it so much. So, if someone like me who loathes to shop can make it in this business, every single one of you can certainly do this without a question. You know, you just have to, you know, be a little clever about it and figure out a way to work around that hindrance. I mean, I don't have any children, so I can't draw on experiences from that, and I don't have any pets, so, you know, I could have used all of that as an excuse, oh, I don't, I hate shopping, I don't like to shop, but I did not do that. So, how did I solve that issue? That is the question that every, what to list, that's the question that every single person in my team has asked me, what do I list? I don't know what to list. And they always ask me, what do you list? And I always tell them, I'm not going to tell you what to list. I am going to teach you what to list. And the first thing that I did, well, after a few months of trying, was to look at the list of U.S. holidays because my target audience was in the U.S. Okay, now, like I said, I didn't start out that way. I started like everybody stars. I basically started listing indiscriminately to see what stuck. And later, after months, because it wasn't weeks, it was more like months, I figured there had to be a better way, and I kind of sat down and I said, okay, let's figure out, let's start with the holiday list, and people might say, well, why the holiday list? Because most people in, in, the, in any country, I would think, uh, holidays is what drives some of, the, some of the behaviors, okay? So I want to share this with you now so you understand that I don't have a magic wand or I don't have some special powers of deduction to know what to sell. No. All I did was basically trial and error. Okay, so I'm hoping that, you know, tonight I can help you um, save some time in that department. So basically, like I said, started looking um, at the U.S. 
holidays because my US uh, my target audience was in the US but for the people that are not in the US let's say for example if you are in Spain and you're and you you have to start selling in your local eBay in Spain and drop shipping from products from Amazon Spain look at the holiday list and and start looking in that market Okay, so for example, right now we are, we are almost at the end of summer. People are still trying to enjoy what's left of it. So what do people do in the summer? They go on holiday, they spend time outdoors. So obviously listing a snowboard or some ski equipment. <laughs> yeah, they are great products, but it's summer people are not looking for that so you might have a listing sitting there for a little while before it sells so um, don't use your listings for out of season unless obviously if somebody gives it to you then you know it you can pretty much do 100% profit minus the, whatever eBay charges you so again what other things like I said people you know do in the summer they like to be in the outdoors, they like to grill, they like to barbecue, they might want to do road trips or go on vacations, entertain the kids outdoors, so maybe some toys to keep them busy, uh, pool toys, rafts, luggage, um, furniture for the patio, gardening tools, uh, equipment for gardening, equipment for any sports, fishing, all of those things will be great items to list in the summer. Now these lists obviously in no way it's all inclusive, but this is something to kind of get your mind you know, going to start thinking of what items you should list. Okay, you also have to start listing, uh, uh, le sorry, you also have to start thinking of at least six months ahead so you know one month two months three months four five six months ahead of time what's happening what's coming up I mean um, right now I mean we have uh, the uh, Olympics in Rio that's starting I think Friday you know uh, kids are going back to school so they're going to be needing school supplies and backpacks and crayons and craft stuff um, uh, Kids also going back to college. What things do kids need in college? You know, they need, you know, uh, bed sets and um, pillows, and they might need a mini refrigerator or a mini TV so they could have in their dorm room. Uh, also, you know, uh, Labor Day is a big holiday in the U.S. Labor Day is sort of like the last stand, you know, the last barbecue, the uh, of the summer, you know, and people like to get together and be outdoors and go to the beach and enjoy with the, the uh, last holiday of the summer um, with their friends and family. Also, you know, football season, what, f you know, uh, I don't know when it starts, but I know it's starting in, in the fall. I think I'm sure the guys uh, would know when that starts, but, you know, start thinking about, you know, uh, I don't know, things that people wear to the football teams, what do they do, they tailgate, uh, barbecue equipment, uh, portable stuff that they can take and celebrate before the game, uh, any logo type merchandise even for the ladies, you know, uh, earrings, bracelets, um, bags with the logo. Uh, for the NFL, which is the football, National Football League here in the U.S., and also don't forget college football. That's also very important. You know, you might want to get a, a bet spread of the college that your the son or daughter is going to. You know, people are looking for those stuff. Um, then also we have Halloween, you know, that's candy and outfits, and then we have Thanksgiving in November, and, uh, and then Christmas. So start thinking, you know, ahead of time, you know, what's coming, and start listing items in your store that will feel uh, that, uh, that would cater to those customers that are looking for things to, to do on those, on those holidays. Another uh, thing that, I, that actually helped me decide in the beginning before I decided to do the holidays, I actually went to the store as much as I hate going to the store, 
But since I do this full time, I have, I'm lucky that I can go during the week. And during the week, it's much better to visit the store because everybody else is working. So you have the store to yourself and you can just basically wander around. You don't have to worry about long lines and having to wait and uh, have lots of people all around you. So you basically, like I said, have the store all to yourself. Just go through the store. Um, for example, when I uh, we do food shopping at Costco, and that's a really big warehouse, uh, a membership club that I've, we've been members for very many years. And when I go through Costco, I usually go and I look at the things that Costco is showing me that they want me to purchase. Okay, and that is what I use. I scan some items, I look around, and that's basically what I use to give me a clue of what to put in my store. Now think about this. These giant retailers have spent millions of dollars to figure out what sells, who buys it, and when to sell it. So take advantage. Observe them. Copy what they're doing. Don't reinvent the wheel. I mean, that's right there. Also, you know, magazines, look at the ads on the TV, the magazines that come into your house, the things that they're trying to sell you, that's what you should be trying to sell to your customers. Obviously, try and find it cheaper. <laughs> now, um, I will show you now a uh, technique that I use when I, uh, when I look for products on Amazon. So let me... Um, Click here and go to Amazon. I have it open here. All right, so one thing that I wanted to um, share with you, when I go to the departments, um, they have changed this a bit. I don't like this format, but I can't, I can't argue with Amazon. All right, so the first two columns, I do not play or look for items in any of these two columns. We don't do videos, I don't do digital products, none of this. So the first two columns you pretty much forget. The third and fourth column, home and garden tools, definitely good category, sports and outdoors, absolutely. Beauty, health, and grocery, I haven't done a lot on this, but you know, maybe some of other people have done, um, I don't know, I, I don't do that one, so cannot speak to that. Automotive and industrial, uh, toys, kids, and baby, always a good category. Um, some people do jewelry and clothing and shoes. I particularly do not do that, but that doesn't mean that you guys uh, can't do it. So um, anyway, so uh, let me I'll tell you my first uh, search term on Amazon was purple Amazon. And um, I listed a lot of stuff, you know, I didn't sell a lot of, of the stuff. I'd sold some of it, but uh, of the items that I found, but um, just goes to show that that's how it, all of this started. So, um, for example, right now, um, we are almost at the end of summer, entering into a new season. So, I am going to search for storage because... Okay, storage containers in all departments. Because storage is something that everybody needs, and especially when kids are going away or kids or, or things where seasons are changing, people move stuff around and they need to uh, store stuff. So, um, as you can see, uh, this, uh, this search term got me 210,000 items. That's a lot of items for me to look through. So we're going to start sorting items out. And the first thing that I want is I want to make sure that the items that I, that I see are prime. Why? Because prime items are in Amazon's warehouse. And we want items that are in Amazon warehouse. We remember in, uh, Amazon has third-party sellers and that are drop shipping on, on Amazon, just as you're drop shipping on eBay. And um, we don't want to buy from them because 
we cannot see their inventory. So we want to make sure that uh, our listings that we're seeing are our prime listings. And as you can see, it went down to 50,000 results. Okay. The next thing that I do is I want to make sure that they have four stars and up because that assures me that they're pretty good products. They're probably good seller products and um, I wouldn't have many returns. I, I could assume that I wouldn't have many returns. And then uh, obviously the we're only selling new items. We don't want to sell used items on uh, on dropship used items on eBay from Amazon. Okay, so now we are with 18,000 results for all the uh, all the filters that we applied. Now, um, what I do is I forget the first page because everybody looks at the first page, and then I go to the second page. And once I'm in the second page, I go over here to the side and say, yep, I'm on the second page because I'm on item 17 out of 18,268. Right, most people, they will look through page one, two, three, four, five, and when they get to page 10, they're already tired of looking and doing research, whatever. So in order to avoid having to skip page by page by page to get to a good page, quote unquote. Now that I'm on the second page, I see at the bottom that we have a total of 20 pages. So I go back up on still on the second page. I go to the URL and then I go to the end of the URL, which is very long. The end of the URL is right here, right here. And from there I start looking forward or backwards, sorry, until I, say, until I find the word page equals to, which is right here. And I said, most people by page 10, they're already tired, so you know what, I'm going to start looking on page 13. So I delete that two, and I type 13, hit enter, and that brings me to page 13. And how do I know that? Because right here it says items 193 to 208 of 18,000. Okay, perfect. What we want to do now is look for items that are $50 and above. And that is the magic number for you, $50 and above. Why? Because at $50, you don't pay shipping. Okay, repeating at $50 and above, Amazon ships your item for free. Anything under that, you're going to get hit with shipping charges. So we start looking at items that are $50 and above. Here is one, a plastic storage and distribution container. Uh, this one is a, what is this? A shed. Okay, keep going. Uh, let's look at page 14. Let's see what we have. That is over 50 bucks. We have this closet made cube organizer. We have uh, nothing more. Okay, let's look at next page. Let's see what else we see. That is over $50. Okay. Oh, here we go. Um, plastic storage deck. Okay, so we have a few items that are over $50. So let's, I'm going to go pick this one. Uh, plastic deck. Let's check this out. It comes in two colors, gray and brown. And then um, we have some other people selling it here. So let's go explore that a little bit. And from where I could see is Amazon is selling this. So that's good. We want Amazon to be our supplier. But I also look at who else is selling it. Um, 
and I see that Wayfair sells this. So this could be a backup supplier. We're not going to obviously buy it from Wayfair from here, but we, but we want to use Amazon as our suppliers. So uh, let's go back here, and now this is the brand novel. I don't know what that is. So let's pick plastic deck storage container. That's the generic thing that we're looking at. Looks like something you know you can use to store. What they have here, what um, garden stuff. Um, you could use it for pool stuff. You could use it for clothing. You can use it for tools, etc. So there are very many uses. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go to um, eBay, and I already have the page open. I'm going to paste that over there. And I'm going to search for that item on eBay, and there it is, the first one. Is it the first one? Yes, price 59 and 67.27. Okay, perfect. So this is the same one, but we're not done yet. We want to make sure that all the listings that show up here are new. Okay, this is the, the research part. Uh, next, we want to make sure that item actually sells because if it doesn't sell then why are we listing it so we are going to click on sold listings and this is going to give us all the listings with these parameters or these keywords um, that have sold and um, they said 51 listings so you basically start going through the one that we are looking at is this one but you start looking at what other things is, are selling with those keywords. Now, this has sold twice, this has sold twice, this has sold twice. So, okay, we have something we can probably list all of these. So, basically, that is how I decide, you know, if the item that, uh, that I'm looking at on Amazon sells for higher on eBay. And we can see that, you know, there's anything from 92, uh, well, this would not qualify, but um, 67, you know, 22, this is probably no, but um, the price, there's a price uh, uh, where you can make some money. All right. So um, another important thing, let's go back to my presentation. Hi, Virginia. Uh, yes. Awesome stuff. But um, I've got a couple of questions in there. What you're doing right now is the manual way, correct? Yes, I do. And this is the manual way. You're going to go through the automated way after, yes? The uh, automated way to well, research like product? We're using the ALC and the yes, yes, to yes, search yes, for yes, items. Yes. Yeah, this is part for, one. Yeah. This is okay. part one. Yeah, we're 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 gonna do. The next thing that we need to figure out is how to price your item. Okay? And um where is my slide? Oh, I hate when it does this. What to list? Okay. You guys need to make peace with math. Seriously, as it pertains to pricing, because if you don't price your item correctly, you are going to lose money. So, what are the things that affect the pricing? Basically, your bottom line is the cost of the product. And the product we were looking before, it's $59. So, that would be the cost of your product. And then you also have to factor in or take into consideration: Are there any shipping pro are, are there any shipping costs to ship the product? In the example that we were looking before, we know there's no shipping costs because it's over fifty dollars. So, you know, if you were you if you were using that listing, you don't have to worry about that. But for example, in hay needle. When uh, that's one of uh, other suppliers that you eventually get to uh, play with, or or drop ship from, um, Hay Needle has uh, their they ship items for free, but they use the slowest shipping possible, and I've noticed that they have a sort of an expedited shipping option which only costs five dollars. So 
for me, I would say I want to get that product to my customer as fast as possible. So, okay, I will add the $59 if, if it was in hay needle, and then I would tag another $5 to the cost. Uh, of my of my cost base of, of my product so that I can get that uh, product faster to my customer. I also know that um, Walmart also has that option. They will ship your product for free at a certain, um, I think at a price range, but if you pay $5 more, they'll get it to your customer a lot quicker. Um, another uh, thing you need to consider is sales tax. Your suppliers will charge your sales tax depending on the state they conduct business in. So for example, on Amazon, some states will charge you sales tax and others will not. However, some of the states where Amazon charges you sales tax on, like California, the sales tax can go as high as 10%. So if you don't calculate that tax into uh, that price, you're going to be giving away profit from your pocket. So you should calculate about an 8 or 9% based on the cost of your product. That way, if you end up shipping to a state like California, where Amazon uh, charges taxes, you're covered. But if you ship to a state that doesn't charge tax, then that money goes into your pocket. The other thing that you need to also remember are the selling fees that uh, all these platforms charge you for bringing you customers. eBay charges you a certain percentage, and um, PayPal does as well, Amazon, Bonanza, all of them charge you selling fees. You have to take those into account. And some of you will have um, currency exchange fees. So you should also take those into account. Now, in the Ninja Team Builder uh, back office, we have a, um, we have a calculator. And I will actually show you. This is the calculator. And I will show you in the back office of the Ninja Team Builder where it is. So um, once you sign in, this is your dashboard. You're going to click on Resources. And you're going to go to e-commerce information. And you're going to find the Excel tracking spreadsheet which is here you can look at it and you can download it here so um, that's where you get it and um, this is I know that the automatic listing tool calculates the profit for you but I want to make sure that the profit they're calculating is correct I because I, I just, it's like a double check and just to be sure because I don't know how um, Infinii is calculating. I'm sure they know what they're doing, but I suggest a way of me knowing for sure and double checking somebody else's work because I don't want to lose money. And uh, so what I do, let's go back to that example that I was showing you about. So this one, uh, if we were going to list this one, I would say, okay, so this costs, the buy price is 59 If I were to, let's say we were using hay needle and we wanted to um, add the $5 shipping, I would, instead of 59 I would put 64 but for this example, we're going to use 59 because our supplier is Amazon and they're not going to charge us shipping. Um, this is, uh, and when we go here, we have to do Amazon. And um, the sell price should be, oops, sorry, the minimum sell price should be be um, how about $95 and this is not working so let's copy the formula here okay. 
So, 59. This says that the minimum recommended price for me to make money is 82.33. So if I do 82.33, this is how much I pay in fees, this is my profit. But when we saw on, there were some that were selling for 94, 98. So we could probably say, $84, kind of give or take, so we'll do $84.99, and we leave it at that. So, when we do our listing, before we, we first, we research the product, then we see if it sells, if it sells, we see for how much it sells, then I come to the spreadsheet and I calculate. And this spreadsheet is, it is also a good way to keep track of your listing. So it also helps you get organized because not only will you be able to, you know, uh, type the description of the item and the URL and the price, but when you sell your item, you can go to the sales tab and you can basically, okay, I sold this and just kind of fill in the blanks over here. So anyway. Um, let me go to Infinii. Let me go um, to Infinii and log in. Okay. And what's my password? I hope this is it. So once you get into your Infinii back office, I hate these. Uh, once you go into the in Infinii back office, you're going to go to tools. You should already have your um, eBay accounts already listed, and if you don't know how to do that, you need to go through the training where it teaches you how to do that, and that is also in the Prime training. So that's um, the connecting of the accounts? You have to, yes. So when you, you are, uh, when you are, I'm sorry? Can you show us where the training is for that? Yes, you go to Training, Prime, and then you're going to click on the Using the Tools tab. And uh, that basically goes through everything on how do you connect your accounts with uh, eBay, Bonanza, Amazon, and all the rest. And uh, so, before, this is very important for the people that are new, before you connect your Infinii account with your eBay account, you have to do a manual listing on eBay. Then you link your eBay account to your Infinii account. And the reason you have to do the first manual listing is so that the tool sees there's actually something there to pull. Because if there's nothing in your eBay account, then the tool is going to think that <laughs> this is not a store, I'm not connecting it. So you first go and do a manual listing, then you come to the uh, um, listing tool and you connect your accounts, and then once you connect your accounts, you know, you're going to go to tools, and you're going to, and this is how you create your first listing on the tool. All right, so you're going to go to tools, you're going to go to eBay Lister, and then you're going to go to create a listing. All right, and this opens up this screen. So in this case, we are going to list this item here, and the first thing that we need is to choose the store, and this is coming from Amazon.com. Um, one thing um, that the training goes is explaining what, how far to copy in your URL, and for Amazon URLs, you're going to copy from the beginning until you start seeing this number that starts with B-O. This is the what's referred to as the ASIN number, so you're going to copy 
this URL up to the end of the ASIN number, which in this case is B-O-O-N-Z-6-A-H-T-U. If you are not sure, go to the bottom of the page and you will see the ASIN number somewhere in here. Where is it? It's right here. So see that number? This is the ASIN number. It's right here. So that should tell you that you're going to copy from here to here. So you copy that, go back to your Infinii account, and the field URL, you paste that in there, and then you select your, uh, your template. Um, there's very many <coughs> templates to choose from. You can choose whichever you like. These are these pretty ones. Um, I particularly like this one, so since I'm training, <laughs> I'm going to use the one I like. So um, it will take a while. See, it says waiting for Infinii. Now the tool is basically pulling everything in from Amazon. When I started two years ago, there was no such thing, so I had to do everything manually and it took me forever you know I would see people doing listings in like 10 minutes and it would take me an hour and I could not for the life of me understand how they did it but again that goes to show people have different skills and I'm so glad <laughs> that we have this tool now so um, in the tool uh, this is going to this is the title you have 80 characters uh, of length or, or spaces to put your title and you need to use up all of them. Your title is where you put your keywords. So what is this item that we're trying to list? This is a storage container. Okay, so we can put storage container. Um, and then this is uh, pool, toys, gardening. What are the things we could come up with? Well, I'm running out of things to put in there, so let's use the suggestion. So this is a storage container. And click show suggestions and we're going to see what suggestions uh, the tool is going to give us. So the first uh, items here, these long ones with the numbers, these are the categories, okay? But now we are concentrating on the keywords that we need, okay? What, okay, it is plastic, okay. Is it a shipping container? No, it's not. Is it a cargo container? No, it's not. Is it food storage? No. Military storage container? None of those. Okay. So, um, let's see. Tools. I will put garage. Organization. Um, pool toys. Let's see. What else? I, I have 63 characters. Okay, what else? Oh, plastic. Yes, that was a good one. So, plastic. Oh. Now, you guys saw that this was highlighted. There's a red. That means that there's a misspelling. So, I will go in there and correctly spell plastic and it'll go away. Okay, plastic 72. Um, what else could I write here? Let's see, what other brown? Oh, deck. Yes, that's another one. Okay, deck. And then what else? 76. I have three more. No. Okay. Now we pick a, oh yes, thank you George, box. All right, 
Now let's see, business industrial, what is this? Not a shipping storage boxes. Here we go. We're going to pick this category because it doesn't fit food storage. It doesn't fit this one. So this one is the closest one. We're going to put that one. Uh, the next thing is <clears throat> the profit goal. It says that we have to sell it for $72.77. And we don't make any money. So let's increase it 5%. See how this changes? This is where now I go back to my Excel spreadsheet to look. Okay, I want to sell it for $84.99. So I am going to get it as close as I can get $84.99. Nope, $25. Oop, that's perfect. 24.9, <laughs> there you go, 24.9, or you can sell it for 25% and get it to 90, all right. So then I will go and uh, leave this, uh, I pick my, um, my policy, I usually do detail, you can create your own, um, but we're going to pick detail, dispatch time, depends on how long, if you're doing this full-time, you can do two days. If you have a full-time job and do this at night when you get home, please use three, okay? Because that'll give you a cushion. And um, you don't wanna uh, have your shutdown, your account shut down because you're constantly missing the deadlines. All right, the next thing that I do is I always make it 30 days because that gives you a higher ranking when people are searching for items. And when you start, you're not gonna have a lot of uh, limits, so you always do one. As your limits get increased, you can put three. Now, in this section here, you have the brand. We don't put the brand. So I write storage container. That's my brand, if I could spell it correctly. <laughs> it's storage container. And then uh, for the UPC, you will remove the ones that uh, Amazon is getting, and you will add new UPC codes. Um, you can get them from eBay, make sure they're Amazon approved UPC codes, because if later when you start listing the items on Amazon and need your UPC codes, uh, they, you need to make sure that uh, they are Amazon compatible. Um, so for now, we are going to leave this here, but you are going to put a new UPC. So. Once you have the UPC, I always copy the last four digits, let's last five or six digits of the UPC and use it as my MPN. And then I go to the description. And in the description, it pulls it out from Amazon. I basically read and I see already that our key for this is the brand. So I would say this. sturdy plastic storage container and then kind of read through that and edit it a little bit just so that it's new. Uh, I looked through here and I looked at the features. I don't need the model number. I will delete that. Um, whether proof, uh, I, any type of warranty, I remove it because I don't want to get the impression. I, I always remove it if they, uh, when they receive their package, that will be included. And if there's an issue, they'll have to contact the manufacturers. So I don't. Us I usually any information about warranty, I just uh, take it out. Um, some people leave it, I just take it out. And then on this part, I make sure the part here it says returns. Remember we changed it to 30 days, but it didn't populate here, so we're going to change it to 30 days. And um, basically, that's it. 
you go here, you uh, pick the image that you want to make as your first image. So um, I would use this one as my first image, my gallery, and then I will include the others that are here. Um, <clears throat> then I click Next. Remember that there were two. We're going to select the color I want to sell. It's basically the black gray one. And um, sources, it's Amazon. We don't have to add it. But remember that we saw here that Wayfair had it when we went over here. We already know that Wayfair has it. So later on, if you wanted to edit this after you've published this, you could come back to this tab and add Wayfair as a backup supplier, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, then you go to the part of submit listing, and then you can you have the chance to preview your listing. So then you kind of this is the first one. Look how pretty it looks. You kind of read it and look at any issues with uh, grammar or whatever. Um, feature spec shipping. It says 30 days. This is ready to be published. I obviously you're not going to publish it because I'm not going to sell this. Um, I'm going to let one of you sell it. So basically, you submit the listing, and you will get a message saying here that you know it was submitted successfully. If you miss something in the listing process, you'll get an error message saying you know MPM missing or quantity missing, and then you just go back to the list tab and go fix what is missing, and then go back and submit it. And basically, that is how you do a listing on the ALC tool. Awesome. All right. You, you can also do the search, say, to look at the start to find the item, use the searching item, and then just tie it straight through to there is the other step, yeah? I'm sorry, say that again? Under your tools, training, if you, yeah. Um, uh -huh. you've got eBay Lister, but above eBay Lister, your product research. It says product research, yes. So you can also do the product research. So and, instead of um, going to Amazon and going through all those testing tactics like you did before manually, you can do right. it. Can you walk us through just one quick scenario? Yes, I will, walk, yeah, I will do the same example um, on the... Uh, people need to know how to do it manually and understand the concept, but yes, once they do... They have yeah, yeah I, I always like to show the manual way because if for some reason <laughs> the system crashes, I can still go and do it manually. And you need to know the concept behind it, eh? Because you're better right, exactly. the grounding. That's right. Exactly. And so now, um, for example, we are going to look for what was, what did I use storage? As you can see, I have a very small memory. Uh, very short, very bad short-term memories. It was storage container. Okay, U.S. Also, have yes? a question there for you, Virginia. Do you list for 30 days, or? Oh, uh, that's an awesome question. I always do good till cancelled. Okay. Yeah, I always use good, good till cancelled because, um, you know, that way I don't have to relist and relist and relist. And then also when a lot of people are watching my items, I can see, uh, uh, you know, what things, if I leave it for like two months, I can see if it's increasing. And if it's not, I can just, you know, remove it and then put something else. It also helps for your ranking, eh? Like eBay give you more power to an item that's been listed for longer, yes? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, could be higher ranks. So, but um, it's saying yeah, that you so still weed out your losers after a couple of months and you just remove them, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I have had listings sitting there because I know that they sell. They just don't sell as much. I've had listings for, I, I actually have in my store, now on eBay, I have listings that have been there for probably nine, ten months, a year. 
because I know they sell. They just don't sell as much, but they sell. And it then when I do, it. yeah, exactly. And when I do, then <laughs> I make a really good profit. So, um, okay, so we are searching for storage containers. And then we're going to do search. And then all the storage containers come in here. And I want to make sure that is $50 and above and that are new and that are higher than four. How do you do higher? Like, oops, four? No, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so these are the only things that came up. So this one, so this one that we see here, remember this one? We already saw it in the list on eBay of items that were, here we go, this one. So we also found it here on Infinii. And we can basically build the listing right then and there. Okay? Yeah, so that takes you straight through to the ALC from there. So if you click the, um, yeah. Build eBay Listing, clickety click, click. This is the part that I hate the most, the waiting for Infinii. But I have to say that I've learned a lot of patience with, <laughs> with this, something that I need to learn and I still have to constantly work on. So. Um, a lot of users using it, which is drawing a lot on the server. Right, exactly. Bandwidth. And and because, you know, I, because I've been doing this for two years, I'm so used to doing it the manual way that, um, you know, but uh, I always like to teach. It's like when I learned how to do taxes, I basically learned it, how to do it manually to understand the concept, like you said, and then... Um, and then, then use the programs that they have, like TurboTax and TaxCut and all that. Okay, so here we go. So now we have the listing pool. It pulled the title. So we want to make sure that we remove that title, and then we start, you know, start doing storage, container, uh, heavy duty, Pool toys, gardening tools, garage. Obviously, you can use some of the words that they had in there as well, eh? Exactly, and you know, you you know, if you run out of keywords, just go in here and type, you know, a storage containers, and see what it shows up. Another tool that I when I when my brain is tired, another tool that I use is keywordsby.com. Um, there's a paid version that I don't use, so I basically come to Keyword Spy and would will type storage containers, and then search, title and then start. One, I'm sorry. Title builder is another good one. Ah, really? I never used that one, but I will start using it. And no. so basically. Storage containers has that word. Storage container has the search volume of 246,000. So that's good, you know. Um, you can go through the tabs, look at related um, shipping containers, storage bins. That's another word, a storage bin. Um, not as high, but quite high. And that, again, brings you traffic to your listing. You use the title to bring traffic into your listing. Um, you click on the similar and you look at what's there and just start playing around. So you basically can build your title, do your listing, leave it there for two weeks and see how many uh, people visit your listing. If you don't see very many, then go back here and change some keywords around, um, change the order, uh, and um, replace some of them and see if that gives you um, uh, more exposure and hopefully more sales. Now, let's go back. I just Any? posted those links in the groups for those two, Total Builder and your Keyword Spire. Yeah? Okay, and again, perfect. Like, 
um, what you're saying in Virginia, but you have been doing it for a couple of years and you are exactly. getting really good at it, so you are not listening so much because you've got items that you've found that are doing exactly. very well. Exactly. I just focusing on you know, f fulfilling those orders and that, and that's what right. people get to after a while, but initially. Well, and that's one of the things that I also wanted to share with them, and, and um, I wanted to share how well I did. I hate this PowerPoint making oh, me go through cool. all this. Okay, so my first year of operation. This is my sales quarter to quarter. I ended up with over $60,000 in sales. Now, as you can see, the first year is the toughest. You have to constantly list. You have to constantly, um, you know, revise your listing, tweak them, you know, do trial, do error. And you will see that, you know, on, on this graph, you'll see that one quarter is down, one quarter is up, one quarter is down, one quarter is up. You're basically going through the motions of learning the business. You're also a little bit leery. You don't know what you can do, what you cannot do, if it's okay to do it, and you're still going through the motions and learning this, okay? Usually the first quarter of the year is the worst quarter of the year because people have spent all their money in Christmas, and now in January the bills come in and they realize, oh my God, I've overspent, I need to step back and hold on my spending for a little while before they come again. So I uh, have also uh, that in mind. Now what happened on my second year? On my second year, you could see the, the trend, it's a little bit more stable, you're a little bit more comfortable, I've built some relationship with some wholesalers, uh, so I, I started doing uh, a lot uh, more. I, I did. I I didn't do as much uh, uh, shopping for profit because, as you guys know, I hate shopping, and I need to get good at that. It's just that uh, it's so easy to just do it from your home. <laughs> but you know. Um, on the second year, I had started to build some relationships, like I said, with some wholesalers and started thinking a little bit more outside the box and trying to get a little bit more bold and trying new things. Uh, I was scared. I actually purchased a ton of inventory from a wholesaler, and I sat on that inventory for a year before I sold it because I was drop shipping it from that supplier. When they ran out, I basically went to town because nobody in the U.S. had it, and I was the only one who had it, so I basically made a killing. And the item cost me 13 bucks, and I sold it for $50 each. Awesome. So how much did I, uh, the sales, from six, over $60,000 my first year to 100, over $140,000 on my second year. Um, and I did all of them, all the five techniques that George explained in the beginning, I did them here and I continue to do and I mix them up and, and you will get to that point, but you have to learn how to crawl before you learn how to walk, before you learn how to run. I'm still not running, I'm still, uh, I'm still walking. So let's put it that way. And then this year, first half of this year, I uh, I'm almost I know I'm already over a hundred thousand, but for the half of the year, I got to uh, over ninety thousand dollars in sales. And as you can see, the first quarter of the year, very slow, and then the second quarter, I have no idea what happened. I mean, I'll take it, I'm happy, but understand this, <laughs> if I, I should have gone month to month so I could show you, you know, that, you know, some months were down, some months were up, you know, so you could see the cycle and understand that that is a normal part of business, okay? 
Some days you win, some days you lose, but at the end of the year, it all evens out. And um, I get to keep between 10 and 15% of what the sales are um, because it, it depends on, you know, the how if I want to put the items on sale or if I can mark them up down or if I find a product that nobody else has and I'm the only one that has it, then I can basically say I'm just going to charge whatever I want and if you want it, you can, you know, you can pay me that you'll get to that point. And um, I think that's it. Open it for Q&A for everybody. Uh, they have anything else they want me to cover, I'll be more than happy to go over it again for them. Awesome, Virginia. And there's some really good results. Huh? Well, I, 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 this business, oh, it, it shocks, I don't know, after two years, I still get my amazed when I wake up. It's like, oh my God, I have six sales in. How exciting. And you see me at 5 a.m. in the morning, you know, clickety clackety in my computer, you know, fulfilling. And then I go and, you know, get my breakfast and take a shower or whatever. And, you know, every, you know, and, and the best thing is that you can do it from anywhere. I mean, there's such flexibility. And I'm not going to lie to you. There are some days I say, oh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to list anything. Um, I want to rest today. But I can do that now. When I did it in, in the beginning, mm -mm. You, yeah. when you're starting something, you have to be consistent. In order to get to where I am, you have to do it every day. If you have two hours every day, just those two hours say, okay, I'm going to list two products. And then the next day, I'm going to list two products. And just keep doing it until you find your groove and you find your rhythm and you start understanding. And then watch the people that are ahead of you. Go talk to them. Make friends with them and tell them, hey, what do you recommend? What skills did you have when you started? You know, and talk to them. They'll be more than happy to, to tell you. Uh, I mean, I'm still struggling with marketing, and George can attest to that all the endless nights that he tried to explain to me how to do uh, AWeber, and I would call the next day, and I said to him after he spent two hours the day before, I still don't get it. So you have to not give up. Yeah. But I mean, again, like, I mean, the biggest problem with, well, the thing about this is you have to continually list. I mean, like, what's the key to success? Well, you just keep listing, keep listing, keep listing. That's the secret, really, isn't it? And after a while, you find products that do work and they do sell, and not all of them that you list will be sellers. You'll end up dropping them exactly. off. Exactly. The ones that do work, you find similar ones in the same category or, you know, in the same product line, per se. And you just expand on that, but I mean, it takes time. You've got to keep doing listings, but like exactly, and you have to, do, and you have to do the listings, you know, in a smart way. You know, I, I, I think that, you know, I like I started listing whatever, and then after two months, even though I had some sales, I, I didn't have the sales that I wanted, and I was like, you know, this, I know, I'm not getting something, and I kind of stepped back. And I remember from when I was a financial analyst, I had to put together a financial calendar for, for the whole team. And, I, and then I remember that I had to put the holidays in. I said, oh my God, let's start with doing the holidays and then go, so I think that happened to me in like the summer. I, it was the summer of 2014 and I said, okay what's coming and I said okay the next holiday is like you know Halloween so I started listing already in August September I started listing Halloween stuff that's a little bit early but I started selling some of them and then I listed I had by then I had already started my Amazon store so you know one of the other things is that you know I, not all items sell well on Amazon, and not all items sell well on eBay. So you also have to see, when you're, you know, you're drop shipping, you have to see what market is better for what item. Like, for example, I can almost never sell any Halloween stuff on eBay. I don't know why. 
some people can, I just can't. Maybe the name of my store doesn't, you know, uh, bear well for Halloween stuff, but I sell a ton of it on, uh, on Amazon, you know. So you have to try what sells best and what platform, um, what the price is, what your competition is, what the market price is says that your item should be priced at. You don't want to price yourself too high and you don't want to also be the lowest. You know, you, you kind of want to be somewhere in between and, you know, if you find an item that sells well and, you know, so you start seeing the sales coming in at a certain price and it says, well, you know, I'm going to tweak it or I'm going uh, I'm going to increase it by a dollar and you see how that sells. I mean, I've had an item that I've been selling since the beginning that Hello? yep I'm here can you hear me I can sir George yep I got you sorry yeah carry oh, on oh okay okay um that I've been selling from the beginning and I was selling it for like ninety five dollars and I started noticing that my sales starting to go down and I said okay well let me do a search on eBay and see what the eBay market price is saying that this is selling at and I was like, okay, so I started lowering the price to be uh, to compensate for the market and the competition. You you know, once you list something, you know it sells, and if you start noticing it doesn't sell, you need to go back to that platform and see, okay, why is my app item not selling? Is somebody copying my listing? You know, is uh you know, are there more sellers? Is my competition selling it cheaper? What keywords are they using? And then just kind of tweak that listing, and then the sales will come back again. Yeah. yeah, what I was getting at before was like, um, you know, you got to keep listings every day. I mean, that's the secret to it. But when you and I started, we had to do it manually. And oh for me God, in particular, yeah. internationally, um, there was a lot of hoops we had to jump through. And some of the instructions we got from DS Domination were not 100% correct. Not through, um, you know, not intentionally. It's just that, you know, it was just different for different countries. And until we got yeah. in and started playing around with it, we didn't work that out. But the point is, now... All of that's refined, and with the ALC tool and the search tool, you can bang out listings a lot faster. Like what Virginia was saying, it took like 30 minutes to do a listing if you're lucky. Oh, God. Same, I wish I could do now, a listing in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but now you can pump them out pretty quick. But yeah, I mean, there's also two, two sides to that. We have some people that do very few listings, but they research and research and research and, you know, pay particular careful with their listings. They write out the whole description with some great keywords. They do a lot of time mm -hmm. and effort into it and they yep. create a lot of sales off a few listings. Then we have other exactly. people who just do as many listings as they can a day and come 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, they've got a ton of listings up and they've found some that work and some that don't and they just go from there. So I mean, there's two different ways of doing it and everyone, you know, you're up to however you want to do it. Both work. Yeah, both work, but you know, uh, you like I like I said, you also the the ones that are giving you your bread and butter, you also have to keep an eye on those to tweak them because you know just because it's sold in January doesn't mean it's going to sell in February. You yep, know, so you have to keep an, an an eye out, and and you know, I never, I think, I I got to maybe a hundred and fifteen listings at the the, that's like the most listings I have ever had. Right now on eBay, I have probably, um, I probably have like maybe 45 listings. Awesome, because that was a question that James just asked. Yeah, I only have about 45 listings on eBay because I want to spend most of my time on Amazon because Amazon is right now the one that's giving me the most traffic. And let me also uh, qualify this. I don't pay for traffic on Amazon, on anywhere. I don't. So all those sales that you saw there are basically organic sales that came through normal channels of, of you know, uh, without having to pay for traffic. So imagine if I sat down and decided to okay, let's pay for some traffic. I mean, I'd be, I won't have time to train people. 
<laughs> which is one of the things that I, it's like, I, I don't want, I want to do it, but then I don't want to do it because it's like, you know, if I start getting sales, like what happened to me in the month of June, that I basically had to stop all my training because I had no time to do anything else. So, yeah. but I guess uh, that's sort of the next step, if that's the way you're going to pursue your business, is once you've got it in profit, well, then you just drive traffic, and as long as your traffic, you know, the cost of your advertising is less than your profit, well, you just scale it up as far as you want to go. Exactly. And that is very simple to do with Amazon, for sure. Um, Jason in the Caribbean, yes, this will work for you, no problem. And um, back to what you were saying before about listing your items, uh, Virginia, like... Mm -hmm. Um, as I was saying, like some people research the snot out of their items and make sure that they've got it 100% before they you know, do fewer listings, but more um, better listings, basically. Mm -hmm. But even if you're just listing a lot of items fast, but doing a little bit of research and the things that you said, like what holidays are coming up, what season is it, major events coming up, trends. I mean, you can do a little bit and like, keep that in your mind, mm -hmm. and that is going to give you a huge head start on you know, getting better listings up without taking too much time. You know, that's just simple stuff. Right. I mean, and it's just, I mean, to me, that, that was very logical. But in the beginning, because I wasn't thinking, it's like, oh, I got a list. And then I started listing whatever without any rhyme or reason. And then I was spending so much time and I was like, wait a minute. You know, the time I'm spending, I should have much more sales. And I'm like, yeah. it's something I, and I had to kind of say, okay, let me rethink this a little bit better. And that's how I started thinking, okay, well, let's, and then obviously when I went, when I started paying attention at the aisles, at the Costco place where I went, you know, because usually when I, because I hate shopping, I would just go through and have a list and I go, okay, I want this. And I wouldn't look at anything else but the stuff that I wanted. So now I go into the store with a purpose. I want to spy. <laughs> I want to spy on my retailer so I could go and duplicate that on my store. Yeah. Awesome. And I've written some notes as um, when you were speaking and going through your presentation, I was taking notes in there and I will send them out with this recording after you because there's some good okay. stuff on there, right? Awesome. So um, at the moment you sell mostly on Amazon. Yes. And I, uh, yeah, okay, FBA so. or do you, you selling them from yourself, so FBM? So um, right now I do 90% drop shipping on Amazon. Okay. And the other is FBA. Yep. Uh, one thing, because uh, I, like I said, I was a financial analyst. I looked at the trends in my business, and I noticed that two years in a row, uh, the month of August and September were the worst months of the year for me. Why? And I started thinking, why? And I says, well, I don't have any inventory for back to school. I don't have any inventory for back to college. I also went on holidays, usually in August. So this year, I put, I contacted four different wholesalers and put together a back to school bundle. And I've sent it in to Amazon, and it's selling uh, really well. Um, I've also, uh, to the members of my team that are doing e-commerce, I've discounted that for them so they can also make some money um, out of that. Awesome. So, awesome. The small steps, little by little, we will get there. Yep, absolutely. And, um, yeah, as Infinio evolves, it's just getting easier and easier for us to, or for the new people to come in. Obviously, everyone's writing on the uh, marketplace right now. As I said earlier, we were on a, that's why we were late getting started, as we were still tied up on a call with Kevin and John. And all of that is looking very good. They're just waiting on a couple of things to tie up, but we'll send out an update on that um, after this call. But that's certainly going to make life a lot easier. And as the, um, you know, using the ALC and that um, product research tool, it's going to be a lot quicker for people. Yeah, I know. And don't forget the uh, Dallas event. Yes. Yeah, there's some more information I on that can't, too. Uh, wait, I'm so excited. I wish it was in Florida, but whatever. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> I did I'm tell like, them that, but yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, wherever it is, people will come, and it will. it's going to be a great event. I mean, all the air events have been fantastic, and they will just basically go way above and beyond. So I'm just basically waiting for them to tell me 
what the hotel is so I could purchase my ticket and get myself out there. Yep. Awesome. Um, system is great doing DSD before and finishing home. Exactly. Good to have you. Great to looking uh, <laughs> looking forward to working with you, James. Yeah. Um, I gotta go. I've got um, a meeting with some other people now. Okay, perfect. But if there's any other specific questions for Virginia while we've got her on here, because we know she is um, hard to get on a call because she's flat out doing herself. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, well, you know, you guys can find me on Facebook and um, friend me. I might take me a long time to reply to the friend request because if I get on Facebook, I'll just get distracted. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, you can uh, just try me there or find me also on Skype at virginia.frankie and um, I will try to answer the questions for you. Yeah, awesome. And as you said before, she um, obviously speaks Spanish very well, so she's got a large Spanish team that she's helping through there as well, which is very cool. And was that the um, event in Spain, you said yes? Yes, I was at the yeah. event in Spain. It, yeah. it was great to, to meet the, the folks there and and and, um, and share a little bit of uh, my story up there at the, uh, at the event. It was scary really scary to <laughs> stand in front and do it live but hey you know that's one of the things that you have to do to to grow yourself and grow your business you know get amongst it that's right exactly awesome all right thank you and um, thank you for reminding me to record this, Virginia. Because the last one we did with Neri was really good too, but uh, I didn't. I know it. I was so bummed because I missed that one, and I heard it was great. But anyway, it was. It's been awesome sharing this with you guys. And you know, whenever you find me online, just go ahead and ask me a question, and I'll be more than happy to to oblige. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, and good all evening, right. everyone. Thanks for um, sticking around, and we'll talk to you all again soon. Cheers.